Everybody, welcome to Digital Asset News, or Dan for short. My name is Rob, and I am uh, I'm surrounded by some uh, very smart individuals who are going to help us make sense of exactly what's going on with the Celsius situation. So my right, I've got Aaron Bennett over at the Aaron Bennett channel. Aaron, thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. Er oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, thank you for being here. And then Tiffany Fong, of course, who is uh, who's rising fast to stardom, as everybody knows uh, what's happening with her. Tiffany, thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. Great. And then a new one, a new guest, uh, Cam Cruz, who is... Uh, thankfully i've uh, been keeping abreast of the situation actually keeping me informed about what's happening with all these twitter spaces and all the different meetings and things like that so cam again thanks for stopping by yeah thanks for having me all right so ladies and gentlemen here are the questions let's get everybody up to speed first things first is that amazingly uh, me tiffany and aaron we talked just a little bit ago a month ago about uh, the celsius reorganization in chapter 11 and I just want to get your thoughts about what has changed so far, if anything at all. And then uh, also crypto as property of the estate. What does it even mean? Selling off of assets and, of course, GK8. So I'm just going to start real quick. Um, Aaron, just real quick, what has generally changed so far since we talked about a month ago? And I'll go to Tiffany and then we'll go to Cam for property of the estate. Yeah, not, not a whole lot. I think... Some of the largest things that we're seeing, the assets being sold off. We saw GK8 being sold. A month ago, I believe we were under the impression that that would either be moved into Simon Dixon's plan or it would be kept as an asset for the standalone reorganization that Celsius says they want to do. Right. I think that was the biggest bombshell that came out over the last month since we've talked. We are still trying to decide whether or not um, coins are the property of creditors or the Celsius network estate. Um, and it seems still relatively undecided. Judge Martin Glenn still hasn't figured out a ruling on that, but it did sound like he was leaning towards declaring coins property of the estate. That's what it sounded like on the last hearing. Perfect. Okay. So that will lead me to Cam Cruz. Cam, what does this even mean? Because when I hear property of the estate and it's only to Celsius, to me, I just think to myself, well, great. Now all my crypto is gone. Is that essentially what's happening here? That's how it emotionally feels uh, because like you've deposited your assets in the platform and you've received nothing in return. So it feels like, hey, like what the hell? Like they've just stolen from me. And there was a yes. huge outcry from the creditors. Like there were 40 objections, which bizarrely the Kirkland attorney, Nash, was arguing that only 40 of all the creditors have filed objections when it's like a ridiculously large number of objections. Um, mm. But I think, I mean, one of the interesting things is the UCC has been kind of working with Kirkland to get this outcome because it seems like they feel it is better for all parties. Um, so even though it feels bad and right. um, like viscerally, I was upset partly because the UCC didn't communicate their strategy to us. So you feel like you're kind of getting the rug pulled a little bit out from under you again. Um, the advantage is that they're uh, going to limit the possibility for the equity investors to come and dilute our claims or create a situation where all these legal challenges could come in. Because as an example, like we're very low on Bitcoin in terms of what's in the estate, but there's, I think, a high percentage of, say, Link. So you can get the people that deposited link in june and they'd be like i can see on the blockchain like my link is right here like give it back to me yeah exactly and then you'd have this inequitable situation i gotcha so right now as far as like property of the state just uh just to clear things up we're taking a look at two different types of accounts we're taking a look at um earn and custody correct so is there a dis is there a dis way to distinguish between those two who owns each of those properties is it right now celsius owns all the crypto that's in the earn and the custody or uh, did i get it wrong i mean it's just oh yeah sorry it's just just uh just the earn account um so tomorrow's hearing actually sorry probably the timing will be a little off but wednesday's hearing determines custody and, and withhold Excellent. Okay. So that's where we're at right now. So right now it looks like it's going to uh, Celsius, but I think there's something positive, which Aaron's going to get into a bit, but actually the next question would be the selling off of assets. And for this one, I didn't, um, they talked about selling off of assets, especially stable coins is uh, Tiffany. Do you have anything on this one? Um, I believe they wanted to sell $18 million of stable coins. Um, and I, 
uh, that was to fund, I mean, Cameron might, or, or Aaron might remember more exactly. I think that it wasn't directly going to go into Bitcoin mining, but I think that their uh, Bitcoin mining will need funding uh, in, I believe, February or March. I okay. could be on this, so... Yeah, and those, and just and just to be sure, sorry, those are our stable coins, right? These aren't some mythical stable coins someplace else. This is your stable coins, my stable coins. Everybody watching the video, correct? Yes, unless uh, I've misunderstood, but I believe it's our stable coins. Okay, and then, <laughs> and then the last thing. So it looks like they're gonna they're going to start selling some assets. They already done so. Next one is GK8, and we'll round this out. Aaron, for this one, GK8. First of all, what is GK8? What is that so important? I thought it was already sold off. I don't understand this part. Yeah, it was sold off. Well, when was it? Like a week or two ago? I don't even know if it's profitable. Cam, maybe you can chime in. But they do like custody solutions. Uh, sort of, I believe it's like a competitor fi to Fireblocks. So okay. yeah, all in one custody platform built for banks. So that's what they do. And you know, it was sold for a pretty good amount, especially at the bottom of the bear market. No, great timing. So now we've we've lost another big chunk of asset, which makes me a bigger hole, it sounds like, if I'm wrong here. Okay. All right. Well, that'll take us up to speed a little bit. Now let's get to this uh, this next piece. This was, um, there was a, a Celsius uh, UCC call. And this is where I heard uh, Cam eloquently talk <laughs> to these, to the gentlemen and of course, everybody in this, in this call. But but Cam, just real quick, and I linked this in the description below so everybody can listen to it themselves and say, it's a fine hour and a half, uh, something to do, to listen to. But Cam, just give us a quick overview about what they talked about in this uh, UCC update. And then uh, we'll get to the crypto property of Celsius in a bit. Yeah. I mean, the main reason for the call was to calibrate the UCC's position with the broader creditor community. Okay. And I'd been pretty vocally um, criticizing them of them not keeping us appraised of their strategy to essentially argue against our ownership of coins. So uh, I had been reached out to to mm. kick off the session uh, just with some initial questions. So we cleared the air about the strategy they had and then identified some areas where um, there, there could be cause for concern about the process. Like it does increase the likelihood of a reorg coming because they have mm. our assets now. So they could, you know, sell they could sell the stable coins, for instance, to keep things going. Um, but it's, okay. yeah. Yeah, no, I, I get it. So so talk to us real quick about the, the reorganization plan. It looks like if they have control of all our assets, they're going to use those assets to reorganize their the company and then relaunch into something else that's maybe a brand new company. Is that what we're going for? Is that even a, I mean, we'll get to the possibility, but it sounds like that's what they're pushing for the UCC. Well, yeah, that's the concern because really, the assets shouldn't be used to fund operations. There was disclosure by Robert Campagna, who's one of the advisors, he was deposed a couple of weeks ago. And uh, of the 1.8 billion stable coins that were entrusted to them, they spent um, 500 million on maintaining their operations over the last five years. 500 million on maintaining their operations over the last five years. 500 million on maintaining their operations over the last Five years. It's like these should be going to earn return, not to keep the lights on. So they haven't been really managing our assets well, and we don't want them to use this as a cookie jar. So like the judge in the court hearing said, you can't like treat them like you're going to Vegas. But um, <laughs> we, we, we kind of need to see actually sustainable revenue streams. Like they, they talk about the mining being profitable. And then you look at the balance sheet and you're going to see $10 million of revenue. $25 million in expenses. And like, that doesn't sound profitable at all. So they're, they're not really backing their story with facts. It's just, yeah, it's just hearsay. And that's another thing, like, I'm not a miner, but I see some people who are heavily into mining and are experts, and even they're having a hard time. We've uh, seen a, a couple of different mining operations get uh, go down. And there's a reason why the difficulty level just dropped. It's because the mining operators are shutting off their rigs because they're not profitable right now. So I find it, I find it quite hard to believe that in this day and age, in this time frame, that Celsius is going to be come out swinging and be fantastic in mining and fill that hole. And then just real quick, I don't know who wants to take this one, but uh, as far as the hole goes, what are we looking at as far as a hole for how much we are missing 
uh, from what uh, would make all depositors uh, actual complete. I think the last that I saw was that we're missing about 53%, unless there's an update to that. Do you, how, you guys see that? How, how much is that in billions? Was it like 2.5 billion or something like that? Mm. That sounds approximately correct. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is the numbers are so fuzzy and because mm. they're like not really, like they disclose the coin reports without quantities, just like dollar values and those market values change constantly. So oh, uh, it's, it's a little bit of a guessing game in terms of, how big and, and they also always forget mm -hmm. that they wasted seven hundred fifty million dollars of equity investment money. So that's just totally punted. Uh, yeah, I mean, just just a couple hundred million between friends. Who's going to miss it? <laughs> so, so, so to finish this one up, uh, this was the big question I had, which I was listening to because Aaron sent this over to me. Aaron, thanks for the uh, Celsius UCC, and they talked about how the crypto property is Celsius. This is from the committee, and they said that's actually a good thing. So Aaron, real quick, why first? Why is this a good thing that uh, Celsius actually has control of our of our crypto legally? Why is this a good thing? I guess. Well, their reasoning, and I know Cam touched on this a little earlier, and he can fill in the holes as well, uh, is that it would allow or not allow the equity holders to dilute our claims and how much we would get back. So the UCC mm -hmm. is saying if the terms of service are withheld or, or held up, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, that would allow us to have claims on all the entities. Uh, for one, it would allow a more equitable distribution of coins. So meaning, right, if Celsius has a larger hole in one coin versus another, people yeah. wouldn't get less than the other. So they are claiming that what they're doing is in the best interest of all the creditors. Again, getting blindsided by not knowing these reasonings when they were supporting Kirkland, right? So literally supporting the debtor, supporting Celsius. And we're like, why is the UCC which is supposed to be, you know, supporting us, supporting the debtor. It was this, you know, uh, point of contention, which uh, Cam has expressed a lot, even in motions, filing motions to the court. So I, at this point, you know, I believe that the UCC is working in our best interest. I think they are working to make things move along as quickly as possible, uh, avoid as many lawsuits as possible. And I believe ultimately getting our coins back as quickly as possible. Some people still think they are like in collusion, with Alex or, you know, all these conspiracy <laughs> things. I'm sure naturally, uh, I, and I get it at this point myself. And if anybody else wants to chime in, I, I think they do have our best interest, best interests in mind. Excuse me. Uh, it's just kind of, it wasn't totally transparent from the beginning. Gotcha. So this will lead me to my, to my next one, which I'm just going to have everybody just chime in as they see fit. So the upcoming options to make Celsius customers whole, because in the beginning it was a lot of different options. And now as we go through this chapter 11 bankruptcy and we see the funds just start to burn and melt away, it seems like we have less and less. So what are the options out there to make us, because we've all lost in this one, have we not? What is the, what's the, what's the options out there to make us whole? Uh, Tiffany, I just want to start with you. Is there just uh, one or anything you can think of? That's so I don't know if there? this, <laughs> this was more in regards to the sale of GK8, and I remember hearing Simon suggest that Mike Novogratz could potentially pay for GK8 in Bitcoin and spe specify that these Bitcoins should go back to creditors. I yeah. think he, he proposed that. Um, whether or not Mike Novogratz actually takes that advice, uh, we'll see. Um, but that could potentially help fill the, I think, about over 60,000 Bitcoin hole, but certainly won't make us actually whole, but could contribute towards it. So I'll take that. I'll take the OTC play. Cam, <laughs> what do you got out, out there? Uh, upcoming options to make you and me and everybody else whole here. Yeah, I mean, the biggest problem is that the mining operation is just eating a hole away in the remaining liquidity. So you have this narrative that's being pushed about how mining is profitable coming from management. Mm -hmm. And yet, as Tiffany said, it's going to be running out of cash early into the new year. Um, now they, they find cash from under the couch cushions. They, they took out $65 million from Bitfinex, uh, just recently, which just came from nowhere. Uh, so like they're able to find cash when they really need it. Um, but like they need to find a way to be able to keep this operation going without creditor deposits paying for it. So they'll need to find some sort of financing if they want to keep this going. The trouble is like, there's such a terrible macro condition as you touched on earlier dan with the uh the climate here because you have this super high hash rate you have a low price of bitcoin high energy costs all these miners are losing money 
and there's going to be a minor die off soon. So who's going to survive? Is it going to be the mining operation that overscaled with like four months of runway? <laughs> like it's hard <laughs> to bet on us right now. Yeah. Um, so you either like we find financing or we just have to kick in the towel, which we probably should have done in the summer. Um, but here we are. I agree with that. <laughs> good, good point. And then, uh, Aaron, I'll, I'll, I'll finish up with you upcoming options. Cause I know we've talked, we've talked a couple of things back and forth about, uh, Simon's options, but where are we at now with GK8 and salt lending and so on and so forth? Well, salt lending, I don't think is even in the picture anymore, unfortunately. So right. I don't want to speak for Simon or put words in his mouth, but from what I've heard, he did mention today on the call with the UCC that I think he still has a way of giving people equity in assets or that's still on the table. That's still something he can do with his regulated company bank to the future. Right. So in terms of being made whole, ideally we would have equity in a company that during the next bull run, fingers crossed could go public. I don't really see another way to do it. I mean, mining mining bitcoin or I should say, mining enough bitcoin to get us out of our bitcoin deficit out of the bitcoin hole i think cam you know it, it could take years just at the current price of bitcoin and the current amount of bitcoin they're mining every day so that's not that's kind of out of the out of the question i think this whole going public thing is probably our best bet if if celsius does not just sell all the assets to the highest bidder at the bottom of the bear market so Perfect. So that would actually, that, that that's actually both questions. So time frame, best case scenario, Aaron just said, Hey, looking at the next bull run, maybe 2025, maybe 2026, who knows? And of course that would be the time frame. The best case scenario is we go public Tiffany cam. What do you guys got for a time frame in the best case scenario? I'm kind of with cam on this one about, you know, <laughs> just say liquidate me, give me the funds and then I'll invest as I see fit. But I'm, uh, in, the I don't same, words out. I'm in the same boat. I kind of, I'm not, personally holding out hope to be made 100% whole anymore. I think we're going to have to take a haircut at some point. And mm. honestly, at this point, looking at like FTX International, I'm kind of like, we are in a bit of a luckier position where we actually at least have at least the half-ish of our coins. Um, hopefully the sale mm. of assets can contribute to making us a little bit closer to whole, but I just, I don't really expect to be made 100% whole anytime in the near future or with any practicality but I, I like your silver lining you're like hey <laughs> it's bad it sucks but at least we're not as bad as those guys fdx cam <laughs> last yeah. one time frame guess, best case buddy just to cap off the mining too like mm -hmm. we put so much or chelsea's put so much resources into this facility like they took out the 900 million dollar tetherback loans so they got uh 900 million usdt they put 600 million into this mining facility, buying up all these rigs that they haven't even plugged in fully yet. And they were backing it by my estimation with 40,000 BTC, which wound up getting liquidated in June at about 22 K. So we ate <laughs> such a terrible loss on that. Like, <laughs> would you rather have this terrible mining facility that's losing money every month? Or would you rather have 40,000 Bitcoin? Like it's <laughs> pretty easy. If we could reverse that, it would be amazing. But, um, <laughs> I think there are this a lot process... of things that could have been reversed. <laughs> yes. So yeah. But I mean, that's one of the challenges is trying to figure out like, how did this company get this disaster of a balance sheet? And like the debtor is not really explaining it. You just have to kind of piece it together. Yeah. Um, and the examiner report's going to be dropping in, uh, what is it? Was it January 17th? That sounds right. Yeah. I could be wrong, but I think so. Okay. Well, so we'd have to buckle our seatbelts for that. Um, but in terms of like the earliest outcome, like, I don't see this being resolved earlier than Q3 of next year. And that's like a very aggressive schedule. That's that's pretty rosy. I got to agree with all you on this one. I think that we are on for a long, bumpy ride, just like the whole crypto ecosystem about, about what we're about to go through. So Aaron, Tiffany, Cam, I appreciate you guys coming on. You can find... Aaron, Tiffany, and Cam's social media presence either on Twitter or on YouTube. I linked all of their information in the description below. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for uh, informing us and keeping us up to date. I appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thanks. All right, everybody. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. Let's get out of here, everybody. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Adios.